This video is brought to you by PCBWay. Use the referral code in the link below to help support the channel. Welcome back to the fourth episode of the Hive 3D Printer. And in today's episode, we're going to be tackling the x-axis. So this might not look like a lot compared to the other stuff we've done, but trust me, this has probably been the most time-consuming part of this entire build so far. So let's get into it. In our previous episodes, we made a handful of parts for a couple of motor brackets. And in this episode, we're going to be also making a couple of new parts to hold the x-axis carriage. But there are some parts that I'm unable to make on my own, just because I don't think I have the skills or the proper work holding for it. So that's where someone like today's sponsor, PCBWay, can come in and help. You can take parts like this tension arm here and get them professionally made. Something that I definitely am not able to do. So all you have to do is export your file. You can save it as of multiple different types of files, but I prefer using step and then upload it to their website. Then all you have to do is select the quantity of parts that you want, what unit they're in, the material you want them out of, and if there are any other surface finishes that you want, we're just gonna leave ours plain, but you also have many other things to choose from. Once you've got all that sorted out, you're gonna to to request your coat, wait a couple hours, and then pay for your parts and they'll be in the process of being made. So let's see how ours turned out. So looking at the part, it looks really nice. So I definitely don't think that Carvera would have been able to do something of this quality. They're definitely using a really large machine that can make this part pretty quickly. But you can kind of see some of the machining lines. It's nice and clean and there aren't really any sharp edges too, which is a nice bonus. So you're not going to cut your hands once you get these parts. So now we're going to have to tap some holes, add a countersink and then put it together. So the first thing we want to do is grab our parts. You can kind of see the counter bars are kind of messed up and I realize it's because my drill was on hammer mode. But all we have to do is stack some spacers into there along with the bearings and then that will make our uh, tensioner. So we're going to repeat that for both of them and then insert them into these 3D printed uh, casings. What you'll see is that the casings are a little bit different now. On the original one they were white but on these ones they're yellow. I realized that I made the counterbores a little bit too uh, shallow and I had to remake them. So they're now in yellow along with a bunch of the other parts that I printed in white because I didn't realize what color I had loaded into my 3D printer. So in our second episode, I think it was, we added those uh, spacers in there, but we now need to move them down just because they were there to kind of space it out. Now that we have the spacing right, we need to put the tensioner into the correct spot. So here's just me kind of fiddling around with it to make sure it kind of fits in the right spot. And we're just tightening it up there to make sure it stays nice and tight. Next up, we're gonna be making the motor mounts. So these are gonna be what's controlling the X and the Y movement because with the uh, core XY, you just have two motors at the top that move the belts in different directions to make it all move together. So what I realized was that the shafts on these ones are a lot shorter than the ones that are in the model that it initially uses. So hopefully that doesn't become an issue down the line. And now we're gonna start mounting these. So we have two 3D printed spacers along with a little plate on the bottom, which we're using to attach it to the frame. Now comes the fun part where we have to get some screws push them through and then start making a stack up of bearings and spacers and make sure that they're not too tall because if they are, then they're gonna kind of get in the way as you'll see me here messing around, trying to switch spacers out to get ones that are the right height. Once we've done that, we're gonna tighten down a couple of lock nuts here to make sure it doesn't move on us as well as one in the corner that kind of spaces it out. Then we're gonna attach our full four bolts to the top there to tighten the top plate down and that makes our first assembly. Then we repeat the same thing on the other side. And we wanna make sure that all the bearing stack up is correct, just so we do not end up like the last time. So this one was a little bit more loose than the last one, and it is a little bit different because I think the back one stays the same, but we're just kind of playing around with it to make sure that it has the right uh, height. And then this one here, I think the other one had the bearing on top. This one has the bearing on the bottom. So it's a little bit different. So you just got to make sure to watch out that you do it correctly. And then when tightening these nuts, you got to make sure that the edges are aligned the same way that the 3D print is above because they are captivated by it. One of the most complicated parts of this entire project was, funny enough, just this little part that holds the X-axis. 
So the reason it was kind of difficult was because of all the tolerance stack up between all the parts that I had. So we have a bunch of little spacers which are all close to the same size, but there is some size discrepancy. So we had to use some little shims to kind of space it out to be perfectly sandwiched together. And then just getting all that to sit nicely together where the bearings don't have any slop was a bit of a challenge, but we were able to get it through it in the end. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be giving you a full little build off over here just because it took way too long to put it together. I think it took me maybe about an hour to kind of get it to a state where I'm happy with it. But that entire time I was pretty frustrated, so I didn't really end up recording that part. But here's kind of what it looks like. And to get to that state, we need to machine some new plates. So here on the carb area, we're machining out six of the individual plates that we need to create the x-axis. So I didn't get any issues making these parts, so I was really happy about that. And they turned out great. So once we've cleared off all the chips, we can remove the plate, give you a nice little beauty shot on the white background. And then we can take them all out, clean them up, and we're left with these six plates. So we have the two top plates. We have some of the spacer plates as well as some of the other ones. I had to go back and add some holes and stuff down the line, but as at this point, I thought I was good. Now that we're done that, we can move on to the next stage, which is putting it all together. So this is the part that took me probably an hour or an hour and a half for the two of them, but we got them all together and here's what they look like. Now let's put it all together on the x-axis. So before we can put those parts on, we're going to need to take our linear rail, which we cleaned up and then slide it into the track. So just We're going to tighten down one side just so it doesn't move around on us. And then we're going to insert the one side, tighten the bolts down on that one right there, on the top and the bottom. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, slide it in there. And now all we have to do is just align our rail to make sure that it is centered on our piece of extrusion here. So we're just putting down a bunch of those and tightening all the bolts for that. Now we can actually try lining it up with the top. So what we'll do is we'll start by just screwing down the one side here. We'll do an M3 bolt with a washer just to make sure that it doesn't move on us. And we'll just lightly tighten those down and not fully crank them. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side here and then tighten all those guys down. So here's the printer in its current state. We're getting pretty close to finishing this up. Right now we've got our three Z axis done. We've got our Y axis and we've also got our X. Then we've also got the great parts we got made by PCB Way this week. Thank you very much for the sponsorship. I really appreciate it, especially because I'm still a pretty small YouTuber. So the fact that you found my channel is amazing. And then for everyone else, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you leave if you'd subscribe, leave a comment, or just give the video a like. I'm hoping to see you next time when we'll probably be working on the hot end. Goodbye.